I'm Arthur Cade and we're at the Brooklyn Navy Yard where I'm taking you behind the scenes at the only place where bourbon is made in the city, Kings County Distillery. Opened in 1806, the Brooklyn Navy Yard was one of the most important shipyards in the country. After decades of abandonment, founder Colin Spolman took over the historic Paymaster building in the Sand Street Gatehouse. Colin, this is your baby. It is. Kings County is the first whiskey distillery in New York City, the first since Prohibition, and it's only eight years old. How does a guy from Kentucky end up with a distillery in Brooklyn, New York? I guess part of me felt like New York probably needed a little bit of that culture that I had come from. But whiskey was the avenue to do it. I mean, I kind of got started because I would bring moonshine back from Kentucky and I'm from the sort of eastern part of the state and so by sharing that moonshine with New Yorkers I got interested in distilling. With a rustic feel inside the gatehouse has become the tasting room hosting locals and tourists to a variety of specialty drinks like their popular penicillin. All right, make me a penicillin. Right. So what's going into this little mixture? Put in some of our Peter Berman. And a little bit of lemon juice, the honey ginger syrup, a little bit of ice, and then we double strain every cocktail. It's amazing to see how much love goes into making every single drink here. Everyone who works here really cares about whiskey. We like every part of the process. And now the test. Oh my God. Yeah, it's really good, right? Every day we're open 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. We also have this outdoor garden. In the summer, this is a great place to kind of hang out and appreciate bourbon at the source of where it's made. Decorated with lights and tables for a welcoming low-key environment, the garden isn't only for guests. It also sources local New York ingredients for Kings County distillery drinks. Some of what we're growing here will become ingredients in cocktails. So for instance, this is mint, and one of our most popular cocktails is a mint julep. So how does New York's only bourbon and whiskey get made? The magic happens inside the Paymaster building, which dates back to 1899. And the American history can be felt within the walls of the production room, utilizing the traditional distilling practices. And here, Colin introduced a new kind of bourbon. We use two different strains or two different types of barley. This was an English malt that we use for our regular bourbon. And then we have a peated malt that comes from Scotland that we use for our peated bourbon. And peated bourbon is something of our invention that really is kind of a hybrid between a Scotch style whiskey and an American bourbon style whiskey. And so it's a tradition in Scotland uh, that some of the distilleries would use peat, which is this kind of fossilized turf, um, in the malting process that gave their whiskey a very smoky, iodine-y, sort of briny flavor. So this is where everything really officially begins. This is the mash cooker. So we'll fill this with 250 gallons of water, 300 pounds of corn, cook it to it's a big sort of hot pot of grits. It smells like oatmeal right now. Yeah, right. Well, that's interesting that you bring that up because any breakfast mush, whether it's oatmeal, cream of wheat, uh, grits, can be converted to whiskey. So what you're telling me is the next time I'm eating Quaker Oats, yeah. I can make bourbon out of it. <laughs> yeah. But my favorite part was the huge fermentation barrels that look like a fitting end for a comic book villain. Somehow the Joker falls into one of these acid pits. Right. From there, the fermented liquid goes into the still before it's filled in the traditional charred barrels. Which brings us to the last stop, the barrel room. This is the barrel room. <laughs> <laughs> the cleverly named barrel room. In this room, we have about 500 barrels aging. Overall, we have about 3,500 barrels aging, but this room keeps all of the whiskey that is a little more on the experimental side. So what are these experimental drinks? This is the Frankenstein factory. Yeah, how do you decide what's going to go into different bourbons and different whiskeys? Well, one thing that we've played a lot with are seasonal whiskeys. Learning a little bit from craft beer, we have a jalapeno grapefruit for the summer, we have a honey whiskey for the spring, we have um, sort of a, a spiced whiskey that's great in hot toddies and eggnog in the winter. So my choice of drink, Coca-Cola whiskey. Cheers. Wait, I did the whole thing. You did like a <laughs> tiny sip. <laughs> I still have to work today. 
Though Kings County Distillery is making its mark with the industry, Collin honors the neighborhood's rich history. In the 19th century, the Navy Yard was an Irish town that fell victim to the Whiskey Wars. Colin installed what he calls the Buseum to remember the evolution of moonshine and distilleries right here in Brooklyn. Al Capone was born right across the street in 1899, and he is who we associate in American culture with that sort of gangster bootlegger, but it's possible he kind of picked that up when he grew up in this neighborhood around this older generation of Irish distillers who were doing the same thing 30 years earlier. One of the things that strikes me about you, Colin, is your passion around this. Mm -hmm. What drives that passion? I mean, I love living in New York and have no plans to move back to Kentucky, but if I can bring certain things that I miss about Kentucky and then kind of make that part of my daily work, and life, I think it's cool. This small business is already making a big impact. So what's next for the brand? The one thing that I am looking forward to is uh, increasing our production a little bit. I mean, we're still very, very small, even among, let's say, craft distilleries. My hope is to wait for those, those longer age barrels and just to keep doing what we're doing. With many spirits in the market being overbranded, Kings County Distillery has established itself as simpler and more straightforward. It attracts customers looking for the genuine, authentic brand. It's a, a friendly business, so you end up meeting a lot of people, and people who are in the world of whiskey or people who are in some other world completely. Um, this is a way to kind of uh, cut through a lot of the cultural divisiveness that um, sometimes gets in the way of that. So Alcohol unites, doesn't it? Does, it? it does. <laughs> Next time you're in Brooklyn, make sure to join me for a drink at the Kings County Distillery. Cheers, guys.